my daughter, her voice was hers from shouting and her eyes were swollen from crying. One day, as she passed by Obegeli's apartment in the school teacher's quarter, she thought she heard a friend sound. Her heart leaped with hope. She rushed to the door and knocked frantically. Obegeli, are you in there? Have you seen Ne, my daughter? Inside. I you my heart, baby. A lady of all men's dreams. You be the one hey guys, just for an update, here is a recap of the story so far. Ne, a 14 year old girl, is forced by her parents to return to boarding school after a long vacation. She's reluctant to go back, but her parents insist it's for her own good. Ne's first time at the school had been exciting and she made friends with Nkechi and Ada who introduced her to the Oija board. The school's hostel mistress, Obiageli, is revealed to have a tragic past having lost her own daughter, Amara, to leukemia. Obiageli became obsessed with the Oija board, believing it allows her to communicate with Amara's spirits. Ne disappears during the midterm visits, and her mother, Uju, searches for her everywhere. But the school seems to know more than what they are saying. Let's go back to the story. Ne, the missing girl, huddled in a corner of Obiageli's apartment. Her body trembling with fear. The room was dark, save from the dim glow of a single candle on the table. The walls seemed to close in on her and she felt suffocated by the oppressive silence. Please, let me go, ma. Ne whispered, her voice cracking. She missed her parents terribly and longed for the safety of her home. Obiageli, standing nearby, looked at Ne with a strange mix of sadness and determination. You don't understand. Ne, I need you here. You remind me so much of my daughter, Amara. Ness heart sank. She had heard stories about Obiageli's daughter, who had died three years ago. She realized now that Obiageli was trying to replace Amara with her. Fear gripped her even tighter, but she couldn't find the strength to fight back. You are just like her, Obiageli continued. Your voice, soft and wistful. You have the same eyes, the same smile. You can be my Amara. Ne shook her head, tears streaming down her face. I'm not Amara. I'm Ne. I want to go home. Obiageli ignored her pleas. She had already made up her mind. She needed Ne to fill the void left by her daughter's death. A few days before the boarding school parents' visitation, Obiageli called Ne to come and play the Oija board with her. This time, she left Ada and Nkechi out of it. Ne was a bit scared, but trusted Objegele since she was their hostel mistress. They sat down and Objegele started asking questions. Amara, are you here? Objegele asked. Ne became scared but stayed calm. At first, nothing happened, but then all of a sudden, Ne started speaking like Amara. M mommy, love, I, I miss you. Ness said in a voice that wasn't her own. Obiageli sobbed and started talking to Ne as if she were Amara. No one, no one is ever going to take you away from me this time, she said. Ness, still in a trance, responded to Obiageli's words. After a while, she fell asleep. When Ne woke up, she realized she couldn't leave Obiageli's house. She couldn't remember anything from the previous night. She tried to leave, but Obiageli kept calling her Amara. Amara, where, where are you going, my daughter? Stay with me. Obiageli pleaded, confused and scared. Ne tried to explain, I am not Amara. My name is Ne. I need to go back to school. But Obiageli wouldn't listen. You are my Amara. You will stay with me forever. You promised, she insisted. Days passed, and Ne remained in Obiageli's isolated apartment, unable to move. She felt trapped and desperate, not knowing what to do. Meanwhile, 
Uju and Chokudi were beside themselves with worry. Days had passed since Ines' disappearance and there were still not a sign of her. The school had intensified the search, but it seems like she had vanished into thin air. Uju walked through the school ground every day, calling out Ines' name. Ne, Ne, where are you, my daughter? Her voice was hers from shouting, and her eyes were swollen from crying. One day, as she passed by Abdegeli's apartment in the school teacher's quarter, she thought she heard a faint sound. Her heart leaped with hope. She rushed to the door and knocked frantically. Obiageli, are you in there? Have you seen Ne, my daughter? Inside, Ne heard her mother's voice and felt a surge of hope. She opened her mouth to call out, but something stopped her. She felt a strange pull, as if Amara's spirit was holding her back. Begeli quickly moved to Ness' side and placed a hand on her shoulder. Remember, you are Amara now, she whispered. You must stay quiet. Ness felt the spirit's influence wash over her. Her eyes glazed over and she remained silent. Uju knocked again, desperation in her voice, but there was no response. With a heavy heart, she turned and walked away. Begeli knew she had to act quickly. She began to brainwash Ne, convincing her that she was indeed Amara. She showed her old photographs, talked about memories they never shared, and even started calling her by Amara's name. Amara, do you remember this dress? Begeli held up a feathered garment. You wore it on your 10th birthday. Ne looked at the dress, her mind clouded by the spirit's influence. She nodded slowly though she had no memory of it. Yes, Mama, I remember. Obiageli smiled, satisfied. Good girl, you are home now and we are going to be happy together. Nobody, I repeat, nobody is ever going to come between us this time. Back at the school, Ada and Nkechi were struggling with their own fears. They knew what happened to Ne, but were too afraid to speak out. Their mother had always warned them about the dangers of the spirit world, and now they were living that nightmare. They continued to use the Oija board in secret, hoping to find answers, but the spirits were cryptic and offered no real help. The girls felt trapped, knowing they were partly responsible for Ness predicament. One night, they gathered in the dormitory with the Oija board. Nkechi placed her hand on the planchette and asked, Where is Ne? The planchette slowly moved around, spelling out a single word, close. Ada looked at her sister, fear in her eyes. What do we do? We can't keep this secret forever. Nkechi shook her head. We have to stay quiet. If we tell anyone, we will be in great trouble. Uju was growing more desperate by the day. She couldn't eat, sleep or think about anything other than finding near her daughter. She went to the principal office and demanded answer. We are doing everything we can, Mrs. Udo, the principal assured her. The police are involved now. We will find your daughter. But Uju wasn't satisfied at all. She took matters into her own hands, questioning students and staff, hoping someone knew something. One day, she overheard two girls whispering about the Oija board and the spirit. Her heart raced as she approached them. What are you talking about? Do you know something about Ne? The girls looked at each other, fear evident in their eyes. We, we, we don't know anything, ma. One of them stammered. Uju's intuition told her they were hiding something. She decided to keep a close watch on the student, hoping to uncover the truth. Inside Obergeli's apartment, Ne's struggles continue. She tried to hold on to her own identity, but the spirit of Amara was strong. She found herself slipping more and more into the role Obegeli had created for her. One evening, as Obegeli sat with Ne, she asked Amara, Do you remember our favorite song? Ne nodded mechanically. Yes, Mama, I remembered. Obegeli started to sing, and Ne joined in, her voice hollow and detached. The melody stirred something deep within her, a faint memory of her real mother singing her to sleep. Tears welled up in Ness' eyes. 
she missed her family and the conflict within her grew stronger. She knew she had to find a way to break free from Amara's influence. One night, Uju returned to Obiageli's apartment. She knocked on the door, her heart pounding. Obiageli, please, I just want to talk inside. Ne heard her mother's voice again. She felt a spark of recognition and a strong urge to respond. She looked at Obiageli, who shook her head and whispered, Stay quiet, Amara. But this time, Ne couldn't suppress her emotions. She took a deep breath and called out, Mama! Uju's heart leaped at the sound of her daughter's voice. She pounded on the door, shouting, Ne! I'm here, my baby! Obiageli's face twisted with anger. She grabbed Ne and forced her into a back room, locking the door. You are not Ne, you are Amara, she hissed. Ne's spirit wavered and she felt Amara's presence grow stronger. Obiageli unlocked her door. She came out and told Uju it was just a noise from TV. Uju left the apartment feeling disappointed. Ne struggled so hard to keep her through self from being consumed. But once again, she was consumed. Ne cried and wondered when she would leave this captivity. The Oja board had become more demanding, more powerful, feeding off Obiageli's grief and desperation. The board told Obiageli that Ne falls in and out of Amara because she's well fed, that if Obiageli wanted a full possession, a permanent vessel for the spirit of Amara, it needed to completely surrender. Obiageli followed the boss instruction, trying to break Ness will. She deprived her of food, kept her isolated, and constantly reminded her of Amara's memories. You have to accept your fate, Amara, Obiageli said one day. This is your home now. Ness felt her strength waning. The lines between her identity and Amara's were blurring. She needed to hold on, but the spirit's grips were tightening. Back at the school, Ada and Nkechi couldn't bear the guilt any longer. They decided to confide in their mother, hoping she could help. When they explained everything, their mother was horrified. We must tell the police, she said. This has gone too far. They went to the police and revealed Obageli's involvement with the Oija board and Ness disappearance. The principal immediately contacted the authorities and a new search was launched. The police arrived at Obiageli's apartment with Uju and Chokwodi in line. They broke down the door and found Obiageli standing in the middle of the room, clutching the Oija board. Ne Uju cried out, rushing to her side. She found her daughter in the back room, weak and disoriented. Obiageli screamed, She's my daughter! She's Amara! The police restrained Obiageli as Uju and Chokwodi hugged Ne tightly. Ne felt the spirit's hold weaken as her parents' love enveloped her. She began to remember who she truly was. As they drove home, Ne was still shaken by the experience. She clung to her parents, afraid to let go. The road to recovery would be long, but she knew she was safe now. Obiageli was taken away, her mind lost to grief and obsession. Nkechi and Ada returned to school hoping to put the ordeal behind them. Ne knew she had been through something unimaginable, but with her family's support, she would find her way back. The cost had been high, but she had survived. Ne sat quietly in her room, the familiar surrounding bringing her a sense of comfort. Her mother, Uju, had not left her side since they brought her back home. She often found herself lost in thought, replaying the harrowing events over and over in her head. Uju gently knocked on the door and entered with a warm smile. Ne, I've made your favorite meal, jollof rice. Come and eat, my dear. Ne looked up, her eyes filled with gratitude. Thank you, mama. She joined her mother at the table. The aroma of the food, stirring memories of happier times. As they ate, Uju spoke softly. Ne, we need to talk about what happened. I know it was frightening, but we are here for you. Your father and I would do everything to help you heal. Ne nodded, her voice barely a whisper. It was so scary, Mama. I thought I would never see you again. 
Ujo's eyes filled with tears. But you are here now, my baby, safe and sound. We'll get through this together. I promise. Back at the school, the atmosphere had changed dramatically. The authorities had conducted a thorough investigation and the staff was determined to ensure the safety of all students. Ada and Nkechi were deeply affected by the event. They had returned to their classes but carried a heavy burden of guilt. They avoided eye contact with their peers, afraid of the whispers and judgment. One day, during lunch, Nkechi turned to Ada, We need to make things right. We can't just pretend nothing happened. Ada nodded, her face very serious. You are right, we need to apologize to Nne and help her in any way we can. They decided to visit Nne at her home. With their mother's permission, they made their way to the Udo's residence, hoping to find some form of redemption. Nne was in the living room when she heard the knock on the door. Her father, Chukudi, opened it to find Ada and Nkechi standing there, looking nervous and remorseful. Good afternoon, sir. We came to see Nne. Ada said politely. Chukudi hesitated for a moment, then added, Come in. Ada and Nkechi walked in, their eyes meeting Ness. They felt a wave of emotion, remembering the times they had together. Ne, Nkechi began, her voice shaking. We are so sorry for everything that happened. It didn't mean for any of this to occur. We didn't know Aunt Yobegeli was going to take it this far. We should have never involved you. Ne looked at them, her expression a mix of sadness and understanding. I know you didn't mean for it to happen, but it was still very scary. Ada stepped forward. We want to help you. If there is anything we can do, please tell us. Ne nodded slowly. Just being here means a lot. Thank you so much. Obiageli was taken to a psychiatric facility where she received the care she desperately needed. Her obsession with her diseased daughter had driven her to the brink of madness and it would take a long time for her to recover. During her treatment, she began to understand the depth of her actions and the harm she had caused. She felt immense guilt but also a glimmer of hope that she could find peace. With the start of a new school year, the school implemented new safety measures and provided counseling services for the students. The principal wanted to ensure that no child would ever have to go through what Ne had endured. Ne decided to return to school. Though she was apprehensive, her parents reassured her, promising to support her every step of the way. On her first day back, Ada and Nkechi were by her side. They had grown closer through the audio and had become a source of strength for each other. Ne, we've got your back, Ada said with a smile. We are in this together. Ne felt a surge of gratitude. Thank you. I'm glad to have you both. As the weeks passed, Ne slowly adjusted to her new routine. She focused on her studies and tried to rebuild her confidence. The nightmare still haunted her, but she found solace in the support of her family and friends. One evening, as she sat with her parents, Uju brought out an old photo album. Let's look at some happy memories in there. It will help remind us of the good times. They flipped through the pages, laughing and reminiscing. Ne felt a warmth in her heart, knowing she was surrounded by love. Ne knew the road ahead would be challenging, but she was determined to move forward. She had faced her fears and come out stronger. With the support of her family and friends, she felt ready to embrace the future. Uju hugged her daughter tightly. You are brave, Ne. Never forget that. Ne smiled, feeling a sense of peace. I won't, Mama. I promise. And with that, they looked forward to brighter days, knowing that together, they could overcome anything. One evening, as Ne sat in her room, she felt a strange presence. The room grew cold, and she saw a faint figure appear before her. It was Amara's spirit, looking at her with side eyes. Thank you for helping my mother. Amara's spirit whispered. She needed to let go. Ne nodded, feeling a sense of closure. 
I hope you found peace, Amara. The spirit smiled and slowly faded away, leaving Ne with a feeling of calm. She knew that the past would always be a part of her, but she had the strength to move forward. Ne felt a renewed sense of purpose. She threw herself into her studies and extracurricular activities, determined to make the most of her time at school. Ada and Dinkechi were always by her side and together they formed a close-knit group. They had been through a lot but their friendship had grown stronger because of it. Uju and Chukudi were incredibly proud of their daughter. They knew she had faced unimaginable challenges but she had a much stronger and wiser. Ne, you can do anything you set your mind to, Chukudi said one evening as they sat together. Ne nodded. Feeling a sense of determination, I will, Papa. I promise to make you proud. Ne felt a sense of accomplishment. She had overcome so much and was ready for the next chapter of her life. As she stood with her parents on the last day of school, she felt a wave of emotion. She knew that no matter what the future held, she was ready to face it. Uju hugged her tightly. We are so proud of you, Ne. You've come so far. Ne smiled, feeling a sense of pride and contentment. Thank you, Mama. I am ready for whatever comes next. And with that, they walked into the future together, knowing that love and resilience could overcome any obstacles. So guys, we have come to the end of the story, but this is a quick reminder. Always listen to your instincts and listen to your children. You never can tell when one of them is actually telling you something you need to hear till i see you again in my next story i still remain tales by chica goodbye